Hello, Factorio fans, and welcome back to Lawrence Place Angel Bobs. Let's see, so the um, as, as as you're probably well aware, I'm now sort of working my way towards having the um, the rocket. Well, the rocket is finished, and I'm working my way towards actually getting the satellite done. And that's required a number of things, first of which is these Radar 5s that I've got being built over here. So this is what I was talking about in the last episode when I was pointing at the previous radar construction system I had and saying this is ugly and horrible and I don't like it. This is what I wanted to work towards instead. So as you can see we've got each, each tier of radar has a belt coming in with the appropriate stuff for that tier. Um, and then they're on, on all the assembly machines are arranged in a neat line like this. And because each one only requires two subcomponents that I'm building on site, um, the in this case the bearings, the nitinol bearings and nitinol gears, it's easy enough to have them in it just in a vertical column like this and use direct insertion. So that works quite well. The weird thing about radars is one of them. Let's just check this and make sure I get the right. Um, what's the name? So. Uh, so that's, that's that's okay. That pulls in steel in yellow. So let's 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 start again. So we, we, the first one is easy. It pulls in circuit boards and iron gears. So it's, it's iron and yellow circuits essentially. The next one is steel and yellow in yellow electronic circuits. So that's again it's quite easy. Suddenly the third one. This is the most complicated because it requires steel, aluminium, and brass all coming in on the same thing. So that's why there's a bit of a sort of a, a tangle here with these extra two belts coming in with the appropriate components for that. And then after that it gets simpler again and you get down to just titanium stuff. Granted, you, at this point you need the lube for the, uh, for the bearings, but that's, that's easy, it, relatively easy. And then, for the, and then for the final tier you've got just the nitinol stuff. So it's, it's weird that the third generation is the most complicated and then it gets easier again for the fourth and fifth. But that's not a problem. I was able to, um, to deal with it, get them all built up and they're, they're now running. So there's a couple of things here. There's, we've got them going into one of these chests as normal. And we've, and we've got all the um, the earlier generations being dumped into these chests as well. So there's just over 10 in most of these. Yeah, okay. Um, then they're being fed into this one and onto the onto the belt here. So the belt the belt takes them up to um, to this station here where they'll be loaded eventually loaded onto a train and taken down to be put into satellites. Um, but they're also being put into a logistics um, chest here. So because I've now gone out and I've upgraded all of the radars around the base, there was about there's only about 60 or 70 of them, I think. Certainly less than 100. So we've now got a, a decent longer level of vision all the way around the edge, so we can see a bit further out. There's this little corner down here, sure that I can't quite see, but that was this is this is a new area that I'm still in the process of of building up and finishing off. So that's why that's not not quite finished yet. The other thing I've done towards building this satellite is um, down here I've got the silver zinc batteries being built. So this is my normal sort of unloading series of stations for things like um, silver ore, zinc, nitric acid, I think that's sodium hydroxide but we keep running out of it, and plastic and those all go together to make the, uh, the, these batteries. I've got 40,000 of them so I'm not too worried that it stopped but it is a bit weird that I seem to have run out of sodium hydroxide because I was under the impression that was always something I just had loads of that I needed to get rid of. Perhaps I've finally used it all up. I don't I don't really want to start having to make it specifically and deliberately because that seems a bit odd when there's so many other processes that, w that um, produce it when I don't when it were in place where I don't want it. Like uh, this is a bad example because actually no, this is an excellent example because it's, it's got backed up. So yeah, I can go up here, perhaps turn this this round, feed it in here, and I need to come up with some sort of cunning system that makes sure I don't run out, but also makes sure I don't have too much. <laughs> um, but I'm sure I can do that. Right. Okay. So that's the um, the radar and the, oh yeah, the battery the batteries I was talking about wasn't I? Yeah. So I've done the normal thing here. We're just putting in half. Well, nine. I think it was nine of each of the, of the machines to start with. Seeing which things are there's a shortage of, and then adding more of those, which is why there's this sort of double row coming and looping around here, and a double row of the battery productions. That seems to be approximately balanced. It's close enough anyway. And as you can see by the fact that I've got forty thousand of those batteries, that's working okay. So I need to, I need to train them in over to over here and feed them into the um, into this. But still, I'm, I've I've still got the um, radio thermoelectric generators to do, and that's going to be a lot more complicated because I'm going to need to delve into the radioactive stuff and the nuclear stuff. And oh my goodness, my brain's going to melt. So um, so because oh and because the um, this system down here requires silver ore, I've also added on a, a silver ore creation thing up here. It's short of bobmonium crystals at the moment, but it is still ticking over. The, um, there's a similar problem with the stereotype um, crystals here, so the light blue ones anyway, whichever those are. So the, the tungsten is, um, it, sorry, no, titanium 
is in a slightly short supply but basically this 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 system is is working well enough so I don't, I'm not too worried about this there's there's enough trickling through for now um, okay so with the another thing I've done with the uh, now that I've got a nitinol supply coming in well it is coming into the station but again that's another thing there's a shortage of that's being fed down here into my no where is it going to into the, oh yeah, here we go, into the belt facility. So it's been looping around and coming up here. So we've now started making the green belts, um, which is the top tier of them, and the green inserters, which again, the, the top tier. So we can, we can start using those in any time when the purple ones aren't fast enough. And um, goodness knows when that's going to be, but it's, it's probably going... I'm sure I'm going to find a use for them at some point. I have noticed that everything seems to be sort of one or the other at the moment. Everything is either on the yellow belts because that's my default and how I build things or I've then upgraded it all the way to purple like this one and there's just never any in between for those two it's it's, it's very much all or nothing but I think that's that, that's 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 absolutely fine because the the materials for making the um, purple bells aren't that difficult to get but get at now that I've got now that I've got a decent process that's, that's just flooding them out in, out here so I, I, yes, I could use blue, but then beyond blue, I only need the titanium and that and the blue circuits, and then those are those are quite easy and in, in available in quite high, high, quite high quantities. So that's that's absolutely fine. Um, I built up the station rack of stations here as well for unloading to and from the the the, um, the bus or the higher up the bus, because as I said in the previous episode, it's it's been getting awkward to thread belts up here so I didn't want to drop things in right down here at the bottom and then try to fight a, a belt all the way up. If I drop them in here. I think I've, I've hopefully left enough gap here that I'll be able to play around with it for a bit and not have not have the same problems I've, I've been I'm having further down, and then I can just plumb them up to wherever wherever they're needed. Um, what else? Oh yes, I I um freed up this bit of territory as well because it occurred to me that I'm this this about this system here that's producing all of my metals we're starting to get quite close to, to the bottom of the uh, of the safe area so by basically trundling the um, artillery train up to here and to here before I built this track all the way across I was able to shell basically this entire area and with them with a little bit more encouragement a little bit of running around and kiting I was able to get all the biters to, to run up to one either the uh, the turrets at the top or the turrets at the bottom it's a slight problem with, with taking these areas over with artillery, actually. So you, you'll trundle up there. And you, yes, you can take out all the nests, all the worms, and that sort of thing. Almost automatically, they'll do the, all the shooting for you. But then you're stuck with all of the all the biters. If it's a relatively short range to where the um, artillery is, then the then the biters will come rushing over and the, and the turrets can deal with them. But if not, you end up with sort of big clusters of them in the middle, and that's a bit awkward. But I have, in fact, got two spitters left over here that just haven't wanted to uh, come out and play. I tried to put a um, plasma turret in here, but it seems I don't have any in my logistics network, so I'm going to have to solve that problem as well and and get some, make sure I've got some turrets. So, and that 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 does have the range to uh, to to finish them off. So that is something that I'll will probably more or less sort itself out. And I need radar down here, as I think I said earlier. Another thing I've done is I've now upgraded my power armor to a Mark II. That means I've got room in it to put the portable fusion reactor and a load of exoskeletons at the same time. So that means I've now actually got enough power and energy to power them all and I can run around really quite quickly. And this is almost this is almost too fast because it's, it's, it's easy to get disorientated, especially if I zoom quite a long way in and lose track of where you're going. But it's really useful when you're just running around trying to get things fixed up and, and working. So it, yeah, I think that's great. And I'm looking forward to getting the next levels of um, power armor so I can put even more stuff in it. The other thing you can do with power armor, especially once you've got a decent turn of speed like that, is is um, attach a load of laser defenses or plasma turrets and things like that to make clearing out an area like this easier because you can just run in and your automatic weapons will take everything out. The problem is, as I found out with the tank earlier when I was using that, if you put plasma turrets on on a vehicle or something that's mobile, you tend to get a lot of friendly fire incidents because say for example there's an attack going on here from the from the biters going against this wall if I run along the back here then I'll end up shelling it and destroying all of this area and blowing up all my own defenses so it's great for when you're out in no man's land and there's nothing nothing of yours to blow up but as soon as you get anywhere near your own stuff there's a rather high chance of friendly fire I could do two different suits I suppose and have them um, with different different setups in them but that's a bit of an effort and I haven't got around to doing that yet and to be honest, the artillery and the plasma turrets is, is working pretty well for me so far, so that's probably alright. 
Okay, I think that is basically everything I've done since the last uh, last episode. I wonder how I'm doing for power. Ah, still loads. I don't need. I don't think I need to put in another band of this um, uh, solar solar panels across the top here. Okay, yes, things things are going pretty well. I'm as I said, there's not much left to be done for the. Um, as well, only what there's one component left to be done for the satellite. Unfortunately, it's by far the most complicated, which is why I've left it to last. So. <laughs> It's going to take me a bit of thinking to work out how to do that. But in the process, I might you never know, I might get nuclear power or I might get uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what else comes along with that. Um, so yeah, the next episode or two, I think will be me struggling with that and trying to work out how to how to do the uh, do the nuclear and uh, do the, all the nuclear stuff. I hope you'll join me for that. It's going to be um, interesting. And so yes, I'll, uh, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.